you are. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brett Davis Unleashed coming to you from IQ Podcast at Attorney King Studios in Coronado. And I have my co-host with me today, Krista. Oh, my God. Crystal Balk. Balk. <laughs> second time. <laughs> oh, I look at her and I lose my mind. I forget what I'm saying. I don't know what it is. She has this way of looking at me. And on the phone, I also have uh, Noah, and I'll be talking to him a little bit about what's going on with the COVID-19 situation around the world. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank my sponsors of the show, Attorney King, for everything he does. Thank you, Attorney King. Also, Indian Motorcycle of San Diego. And... Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan Hotel and Restaurant. Sorry, I forgot. To, I'm losing my memory today. What's going on with that? And I'd like to thank them for what they do. It's called No Sleep, Brad. No. Oh. <laughs> anyway. So welcome, Noah. <clears throat> hey, good to be here. Pl- uh, plenty of sleep on my end, so I'm raring to go to talk about uh, just these crazy times. Yeah. Uh, Crystal, do you have any questions you'd like to ask him about COVID-19 at all? No, I'm intrigued to see what Noah has to say for us. So what's your what's your take on this whole thing, Noah? Um, do you think that um, it, it was created in a lab uh, involving bats and snakes, or do you think this is something that is uh, happening in some terrorist type of way uh, going on through the, throughout the world? Well, I have I have a very unique view. I mean, we, we most of us have heard the stories from the mainstream media talking about it. Just comes from the uh, the the market the black market over in China where you know they're they're selling these animals whether they're bats or you know ferrets to people to be able to eat and so the handling of these animals they say um, in you know bad poor conditions and the type of animals that they are lead to you know spreading diseases uh, well that certainly does make sense to me and on a logical level I could buy that I don't think that is what is going on here I have also heard. Lots of reports from various sources that say that, you know, this is something that the um, government agencies over in the Far East, I'm not going to name a nation in particular, but they've been cooking up this type of stuff to use for biological type weapons. This is almost a test to see how the nations around the world, especially the United States, are going to react to it. And that this is uh, just a grain of salt compared to what we might face in the future. I hope that's not the case. And I hope that, you know, this, this goes away. I mean, it's really just creating a lot of pandemonium here in the States and people are kind of going stir crazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm hearing more things about domestic violence. I'm hearing more things about, um, yesterday I was at the store and I dropped in uh, to pick up some things over at Target and this child was just going crazy and I could hear the mom trying to, to calm her down because, Sure. That's the first time in like two and a half weeks that this kid's been out, and so the kid, the kid didn't want to go back home. Just she started freaking out and screaming, and the mom was just losing it. Well, you know what? I don't know why they have a kid with them, you know, in the store during this time. No, so. all kids should probably be staying at home. Absolutely. I mean, that, I mean, even my kids, my kids are twenty-two, and I am hounding them, making sure if you're not at work, you're at home, and you know, just to make sure that everybody's safe. You know, I, you, 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 they think they know you know, what they're doing, and, you know, but unfortunately, you don't know where person A or person B has been, even if they tell you, and that's the, that's the random factor in this that I think is causing, like, situations like in New York, where they are just having an emergency crisis over there. I mean, it, it, uh, it, they, they don't know how to handle it, quite frankly. I have a question. I Actually, you know what? It's a statement. Um, this morning, I was listening to, uh, to uh, 600 with... Um, What's his name, Brad? Um, 600 AM? Yeah. Um, with oh, Do- Kogo. 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 And, uh, and he was saying that that big, you know, that big uh, military ship is there and on, on the Hudson. What's the oh, name of that ship? Oh, you're, uh, listening to, you're listening to Rush Limbaugh. Yes, that's right. I was he listening made a, to Rush. Okay, and he, and and he so, got his ships mistaked. Yeah, but he had said that there's only, you know, they're, they're saying that this huge you know pandemic this huge thing going on in in new york where everybody is Mm -hmm. saying that they're just overfilled but there's only 20 people in that ship so um he's like what is going on he's like you know he's talked to a couple people and um in a couple of the uh hospitals and they're they're not filled to capacity so you know we're just wondering i was wondering like you know the news is making it really big 
and really hyped up. So what's going on there? Yeah, the, the numbers are hard. Uh, I mean, and that's where I would say check your your sources. And even if you've checked your source, find another source. See if you can match numbers because there's so much information out there right now. It's really hard to make sure you get all your facts straight. And that's one thing I always tell people working in the media, uh, especially if there's debate, healthy debate going back and forth, is check your sources and not just check your sources, but also go to other sources and make sure that the stories are matching up because otherwise you're just going to be giving out false information. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing that a lot of people uh, here in the States don't necessarily think about, I have a dear friend over in the UK and where it's different over there where they're doing socialized medicine and hopefully we never have this here, uh, which is why it's also good to talk about is they're not allowed to go to hospital as they call it. Like he thought he might have, COVID-19. Didn't know if it was that or the flu, and he's there around his family. Not allowed to go to the hospital to get tested unless he gets into critical condition. And so it's much different over there. And We should really just count our blessings, even if the hospitals can't handle the amount of uh, patients that are coming in over here. It's a lot different. We kind of have a lot better situation going on in the States. You know, the other thing that comes up out of this, too, and, and Sarah was talking about the numbers and you were talking about, you know, checking the numbers. I've heard there's a, I've heard there's some states like New York that's hospital system is really not that great and they've gotten themselves in a mess. And so the, this is the opportunity in a lot of ways for them to really turn their whole situation around because there's a lot of government assistance coming. There's more opportunity to get the things that they need for the future. Yeah. But I've heard up to this point that they were having a, a lot of problems over there financially. Yeah, I've, I've heard that too. And, and one thing, especially if you're in a hard hit area like New York, uh, California has really skyrocketed in the numbers. Hopefully we get that under control with social distancing, et cetera. Uh, but I can't stress enough when people are out there and you are getting supplies. And now, fortunately, a lot of your stores are putting limits on what you can get. But the hoarding mentality, I was talking with a guest on my radio show about it and it really it, it, it does no it's not ethical first of all and it does nobody buddy any good it causes a, a lot of stress for the people that can't go out there and get their necessities for the family so just just don't do it you know places are going to be open if you're careful you wear your mask you wash your hands uh wear gloves now that you know people are saying do that as well uh you're probably and i say probably because it, nothing's 100 percent. you're probably going to be okay with depending on where you go just get the essentials for your family and make sure everybody else is able to do the same. Yeah, because if you go to the stores, do they seem more than stocked? Yeah, right now, everybody seems really stocked up. So, yeah, there's more than plenty for everybody. Yeah, and, and I think that that's because a lot of the stores, Sarah, have uh, put these, you know, the, the limitations on. So if you're going for toilet paper, you can now buy, I think it's two pa of the big packages, and you can't buy any more than that. Right. Uh, but I have heard stories of people trying to, unfortunately, you know, either steal stuff mm -hmm. or, you know, going in, making one trip and then going back in again. So, again, just, you know, we, this is the time to come together and to make sure that we're all okay. And, you know, if we're going to be united, that's the best way we're going to get through it. I heard somebody <clears throat> during the week, and I don't remember where it was at in the United States, somewhere at a Walmart got uh, robbed of their toilet paper. Oh, yeah. That didn't surprise me. They got robbed? They got, you, you, for toilet paper, they got robbed at gunpoint for toilet paper. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and, and, and something else that people can, can do, too, that, I, that I've heard from a, yeah. from a doctor friend that I have, and again, it's not a cure because there is no cure for this thing yet. Uh, unfortunately, hopefully that you know is being worked on uh, exponentially. But if you can really get a dose of, like, good, solid – vitamins on a regular basis or there they have these uh various herbs and spices that if you you know if you put that into your diet uh wild oregano i heard i have heard it, it just works wonders it yes. really boosts your immune system and so if you do get it you're going to have a better chance at fighting this thing off that's right i went into this whole thing and i know the fact is there's a lot of people that, that, that do have it and have actually they might have even had it already in um october or november didn't know what it was and overcame it, overcame it because they maybe because their, their, their health. But I also know somebody that texted me yesterday and I think she's from England 
sometime last night. She said that her 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 um, it was her mom or her grandmother actually had died during that time also, and they were getting ready to release her, and she got worse instead of better, and she died. And she thought that the symptoms were very similar to COVID nineteen. They just didn't know. They just didn't know what that, that what, it was. what it was. I may yeah. be, I may be doing an interview with her about it uh, coming up, but. Uh, I think you're right. I think uh, the one thing I can say is a lot of people that have passed away are usually older and also have immune challenges going on with their bodies. Mm-hmm. But on that, other, on the other hand, in San Diego, um, the cases that we have, not the ones that have died, but uh, the highest percentage of people that have it in San Diego are between the ages of 30 and 39. Yeah, I heard that recently, too. That rather shocked me because you always hear – uh, kind of the main thing you hear right now, which I've never fully bought into because I hear of individual cases, but now I heard that stat, that stat as well, Brett, that oh, it only really affects the older people. They're the only people that really have to worry about it. Well, that, what you just told me, and I've also heard, I mean, that kind of speaks to the contrary because 30 to 39 is hardly old. Right. But I think the difference might be is that California and San Diego were really honestly staying away from each other. And, True. And and the, ca- the cases, how many cases is it up to? 15 cases that have died now in San Diego? 16, I think. Is, is it is 16 that, right? that have died in San just, Diego? Is it San Diego? I'm not sure. If you give me one second, the beautiful thing about live podcasting and radio, I'm actually going online right now. We'll <laughs> Good. Get that stat. So that group has been over the age of 55 and over, the ones that have died. The ones died. that have died, yes. Right. But the people that actually have the most of it is thirty to thirty nine. Right. Now, I don't know. I don't know if those numbers are accurate on the death of San Diego. Um, how many have died in California total? Is the other question. How many died in California? And how many have died in San Diego? I don't have those numbers. I thought it was with fi- right for some now. reason. I thought it was fifteen people that have gone and then died, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, I have. I um, maybe it's California total. Yeah. And I, and I also heard California has one of the lowest ratios per capita also. So, I mean, uh, we're doing something differently in California. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I think there's a lot, especially in Southern California, Brett, uh, San Diego specifically. L.A. is a bit of a different beast, but there's really a sense of community here, at least, you know, the, the time that I have been in, in, in San Diego, which is most of my life. Uh, but we really seem to, when you know things really get bleak, the community comes together, and I, you don't see that everywhere. And that's it's very heartwarming to see, you know, people helping people out. You know, uh, for I've heard of people going over to neighbors' house and they don't necessarily have contact with them, but they'll, they'll drop a care package off on their doorstep because they know their neighbors having a hard time going out and about. They, you know, and that's really what it's all about, right there. And I, I've heard a lot of those stories, and I think that's wonderful. I have a, um, a question for you, Noah. I don't know if you've heard this, sure. but somebody, you know, was saying something about the COVID nineteen was not an actual virus; that it was due to the fact that we have five G, and that everybody um, that was getting it, you know, it just, you know, the ones that are using their phones, the ones that are around. Um, yeah, electrical, you know, the the 5G network areas and that it started in Wuhan, that they have the biggest, that's where they started the 5G network and that, uh, so I don't know. Do, do, have you heard anything about well, that? I'll tell you, I don't, but I will say this because I've done um, minimal amount of research, but I have started to do research with, with 5G. I refuse to use it. I will never use it, uh, one, because I'm a, I'm a recovering uh, skin cancer patient and you know i get checked on the regular and they you know it's really supposed to from everything i read even though your you know telecom companies will deny it it wrecks havoc on the dna and the skin um there has not been uh they have not done the testing that they've needed to do or if they have they've buried it deep and don't want to share the results but i that i wouldn't say that's totally out of the realm of possibility yeah. 5g is such a new technology that has not been perfected, no matter what anybody tells you, and it's well beyond the scope of what we're currently using. Yeah, what we're using now isn't 100% safe, but it's a lot more safe than what 5G, uh, the potential damages that that could really do to the the human system can can cause. So I 
you know, that may be a possibility. Yeah, the, the, well, they were saying that it's not a virus, that it's actually our bodies, the toxins coming out of our bodies. And so, I, you know, it, the possibilities there, you know, it's just another thing to think about.